Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this cutie patootie we're creating today. And here are the supplies that we used. So I'm starting today's project on a 12 by 12 MDF board. I'm using Liquitex Map Medium to put my papers down. This is um, a bunch of maps from the Vintage Map Collection. Um, and this collage pack will be on sale this week for you to grab if you would like to use them. I chose the maps to go along with the quote and the meaning and the story of the piece. So I'm going to get all of those papers laid down with my Liquitex um, matte medium top and bottom. All of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. So I've grabbed a piece of um, scrap paper that I had that looked like wood and I cut that out and put that down to be my door and just traced the stenciled area onto that piece of paper so I could get the shape. And I put that down with my matte medium. And now I'm coming back with my large door stencil and some gesso. And I wanted to do this really, really messy. I didn't want to have real clear lines because I wanted it to look like an old wall. And so that's why I'm using my brush. And I'm just going real quickly and um, fast over the entire piece just to get that um, stenciled image and I'm using a lot of gesso on my brush so that I can get some ridges as I push that paint up against the sides of the stencil or that actually the gesso up against the sides of the stencil and I know that my tree is going to be over on this side so I'm not being real particular about um, the bricks or anything like that. I just needed something in the background to um, kind of peek through the tree and look like that wall. I'm just going to cover the bottom portion with some gesso real lightly because I want I don't want to completely cover it I want that map to poke through and peek through and all that kind of thing because that's part of the story so now I am taking some uh, Lucas Krill paint in teal and I've watered it down and I'm just um, going over the top of it with a very light coat and I am not exactly sure what happened, but um, something got on the gesso or the paper. I am not exactly sure what happened, but I have dried this thoroughly. And as you can see, as I come back to pick up that paint, it all, it's all coming up. And it was, I just couldn't figure out what was going on. So you're going to watch me fuss with this for a while because I'm trying to figure out how now to make it look like I wanted it to look. And I'm going to go back and forth here a little bit to kind of get this, this kind of grungy wall feel. And every time that I put a new layer of paint down, it's kind of pulling up the previous layer of paint. And it was so frustrating I was I wasn't sure if I just needed to scrap it and start over or what I was going to do but one of my best pieces of advice when things don't go according to plan is to let it go and move on and work on something else um, go to a different area of the piece and just kind of let it sit for a bit um, and let go of some of that frustration and focus on something else until you can kind of get a clear mind and come back to it. So that's one of my best tips for you if things aren't going the way that you planned. So I've, I've put in the path and now I've just got some um, olive green and some green gold Lucas acrylic paint watered down again and I put that down for the grass. And now I'm coming back over it again to again try and get some clear 
definition of some bricks in that, at least on that one side. And I fussed with it for a little while longer and I just decided to let it be. And I'm just coming back with raw umber and kind of smooshing in the brick shape so that I can again get that shape that I was looking for in those bricks. So I'm trying it again. And this time I, I got the look I was looking for. I'm just using some gesso and pushing it through my stencil. It's not perfect um, by any means, but it's, it's going to work. I will make it work. And like I said, I just decided to let it be and move on and give it a rest and then look at it again with some fresh eyes. So I am, this is the large tree stencil and I'm telling you this project was so easy um, and I love using stencils as my guide. It just makes everything go so quickly. I used the, and I could paint in my leaves, um, but I at least get some uniformity and um, good coverage when I can use the, the stenciled images. And then I'll come back in and, and customize it and add a few more leaves and paint swishes. But this at least gives me the, a consistent shape in the background. And then I can be painterly on the top. I'm using two different colors. I'm using the olive green and the green gold in the Lucas paints. So now I'm coming back and I've lightened up my paints with some gesso and I'm just going to add highlights and high, highlight touches to the leaves and then add my own little painterly leaves in between some of the blank spaces. Now I'm coming back in and I'm <clears throat> filling in some of the empty spaces that the stencil left and then adding in a few more branches um, peeking through the leaves. Adding just a little bit of gesso and um, color to the tree trunk to give it some um, life and not make it so flat. Using some of my raw umber to um, add some depth and some shading um, in like against the wall or where you might see dirt or you know grungy grime that kind of thing highlighting the path the tree trunk. Adding some additional depth and shading around the door where there might naturally be shadow.
and then I'm going to add some raw umber in between the bricks and really try to bring this piece together and bring the bring those bricks out add that color in between um, to really accentuate those bricks just a little bit So now I'm really going to add detail with my charcoal pencil, I mean char soft pastels. Um, this, this part just really makes everything come alive. I love using soft pastels because it's a no fear way to get color down, experiment, see if something's going to work because if it doesn't all you have to do is wipe it up. Um, so I'm going to use a variety of colors and add in all the depth the dimension, the shading, light, shadow, all of those kinds of things throughout the piece with my soft pastels. And I felt like it was a good option, the soft pastels, because the piece was having, I was having issues with paint sticking and um, so I knew that this would work and I could put a fixative over the top of it to set the um, soft pastels and then put my sealer on at the end and so I felt like it was a good option and it was good it's good practice to just get those pastels out and just really play and use them for all of the details And this green that I'm using is so beautiful. Um, it just really makes that grass, the grasses come alive. So I've got some terracotta, that's the name of the paint, terracotta by Lucas. And I'm going to draw in my hinges and my door handle. And then I'm going to come back over the terracotta with some raw umber and some black to, to give it some aging. So that it doesn't, so it looks like it's been weathered and um, not so fresh and new.
now I'm going to add in my grasses and my flowers. I'm just using quick up and down motion to get that grass in. Making sure to use a couple of different colors of green to get highlight and low light. And I'm just doing quick dots with my paintbrush with some um, rose and caramel and some gesso. going to start finishing up everything with my charcoal pencil and really adding any additional depth and dimension that I want. I will shade all over. I will shade all the leaves. I will um, go around all of the leaves um, and just really add de definition all throughout the piece with my charcoal pencil adding any wear and any more grunge that needs to happen like with the door and the door handle. So this piece really has some great meaning and I, I had um, and I had my quote and um, I knew what I was going to talk about and then when this piece didn't go according to plan it was just so perfect and I, I share all about that at the end of the video so I hope you stick around for that conversation it's so good um, and it goes so well with how this piece came together it's just I love it when that happens again all of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box the two stencils that I use today along with the collage pack will be on sale so I'll finish up my shading and I'll put down my quote with my matte medium um, and I printed that on tissue paper and then I will shade around the edge and that is it my friends. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and um, enjoy the conversation at the end and I will see you soon. Oh and if you enjoyed today's project subscribe and like and so that you never miss a video and I will see you next week.
Well, hello loves. Happy Sunday to you. This is happiness right here. It is it is the wish for warmer weather <laughs> for sure. Oh my gosh. So I went over everything throughout the video and talked through everything that I used. And um, this piece gave me a struggle at first and um, it was perfect for today's message. Um, I already had this quote. I had it all, you know, put together in my head of what I wanted to talk about and all that kind of stuff. And then when all of this happened, um, it was it was perfect because it just tied right into what I wanted to say. And um, I love it when that happens. It happens to me a lot, and I just I think it's divine. So anyway. <clears throat> So um, the stencils, just before I get into the, the meat of, of the inspiration, the stencils, the two stencils that I used will be on sale today. Um, and the collage pack as well, the MAPS collage pack. Another thing I wanted to say before we dive into the message is that the Focal Point and Finishing Touches Workshop, this is the last, you've got two days left before you, so you can take advantage of the Early Bird Special. So loves, this says the journey of today begins with letting go of yesterday. And I get this email all the time about um, artists, the creatives that follow um, along my journey um, frustrated about their creative process and how they failed miserably at a project and then are terribly afraid to start again, to pick up the paintbrush again. And um, this piece was the perfect example of that, of this process, of life process, of, of this quote. So when I started this piece, for no reason, I have no idea, um, except for maybe the oil on my hand, because I had put some essential oils, um, I always, I will usually in the morning put some essential oils on my hands and my um, wrists. Um, and when I maybe put the papers down, because I'd done it just before, maybe I got some of that oil on there, I don't know. I have no idea why the paint kept coming up. Um, it's crazy. And, the, and then I tried to work it again, and then it just still wasn't, it wasn't working. It didn't look at all how I wanted it to look. And as I explained throughout the video that sometimes when you're you know, in a spot and it's not working, you need to move on and go to some, do something else. And that goes along with the message today. So I want to encourage you, if I can do nothing else in my journey, is to fall down and get back up in anything anything that you do in your life, in your art, in your relationships, in your work, um, in, in everything. I cannot tell you how many times I have been on a, in a pile on the floor with my life a uh, disaster or how many pieces of art I have stacked up that just didn't work. It is part of of our journey and if we allow it if we allow it if we let go of what didn't work what mistakes we made what unbeknownst to us that we had no control over things didn't go the way we planned if we can learn to let that and I can say a word here but I won't because let that stuff go um, that's how passionate I am about this. If we can let that go and rise up again and try and try and try again. Because let me tell you, you get you don't get better at anything by staying on the floor in a puddle, by refusing to pick up your brush because you failed yesterday, by not making the pitch or the phone call at work because it didn't go well the last time whatever it is by starting a business I have started a couple of businesses and failed um, and had to close the doors and all of those things and lost money it's it is it's what makes us who we are those things of 
mis and I, I don't like to call them failures because I don't think they're failures. I've never looked at it as a failure. I've always looked at my blunders as learning, as wisdom, as growth. And I can say many, many times throughout my life that I will not want to do what I just did again. Um, but I don't call them failures. And so we can only begin to journey on ahead in our walk, in our art, in our life, in our relationships if we continue every single day to let go of the past, to let go of yesterday's blunders, to let go of things that didn't go right or whatever it is. We cannot journey on the path and walk through the doors that we need to walk through and get better at what we need to get better if we're holding on to what has happened. And that takes practice. It takes in like our internal, because I know I have spent a lot of time in therapy. I, I, I wake up every day and I reinforce my practice of letting go. I write down what I'm grateful for. I write down what I'm going to do better today. I write, I practice hard at letting go of yesterday so that today's journey will be the absolute best that I can give it today. Will it be perfect? No, it won't. And that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. And if we can stop beating ourselves up for all the stuff and all the things, our journey today will be so much better. We will be able to let go of the fear and the doubt. Fear and doubt are are terrible villains in our lives because they tell us lies. And only by letting go of that and um, doing the work, you have to do the work. It doesn't just happen. Doing the work, seeing the therapist, reading the books, whatever it is for you, however it looks for you, will you be able to let go, let go of the doubt, the fear, the voices, the stuff, and be able to journey on this day the best that we can. So passionate about this. This is why I do what I do. This is why I started my business so that I could encourage each and every one of you to journey today in the best way that you can and not worry about yesterday. All right, my loves, I hope your Sunday is wonderful and restful and I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.